woke up today with a fear that while I'm very sincere, I'm not always clear about the need to adhere to the spoken word of yesteryear. See, I give you projects and readings, but at times I feel you're divorced from the teachings and preachings of Maseth at Kedushin. If you really have this fear and you mean it true and dear, then you'll have a good year when you hear that we don't try to rid our minds of everything you've taught us up here. We still remember what you taught us in the beginning of the year. It says in the Mishnah right here that all mitzvot what the son and the father men must adhere. And if this scenario appears and it changes around like a gear, then both men and women are obligated to volunteer. You don't have to be an aeronautical engineer to participate this academic year in all positive time about mitzvot. Is that clear? And we learned that a father also has an obligation it's to give his son a circumcision. And if the father is not able to complete this task and the bait team comes in to save the day at last. But if they weren't able to help the son, then it's up to him to get the job done. And if he couldn't and that was his fate, then he will get cut off. Cut it. When it comes to using Torah and page on a bend, there's one basic rule at hand. If you're not obligated in the command, then you can't help others because you're a band. So while women have many things to do, they can cross off their list, these two, and how do we know that the Father doesn't teach them? The Pasuk says, B'neicha and B'lo B'notecha. We cannot follow this ideal, we must create a revolution. B'neicha and B'gam B'notecha. Because everyone has access to the excess of knowledge, we cannot stop those who are striving to stand by a gender, because knowledge is unlimited to a single gender. If the key to life is learning, then what's the law? Those who disable not enable women's ability to learn as they yearn for knowledge. Gemara or Mikra? Both require undeniable wit. If we take away that decision, really, whose choice is it? Ah! <laughs> Come on! And the rabbis taught that a man should learn, and so should his son. The son should be motivated and successful, and his learning will be fun. The son will proceed and move on to succeed. The son preceding his father is according to the Torah legal. A person's own mitzvah precedes other people. Motivation is the key to learning. If we can all be this motivated, it will be stunning. Rav Acha sent his son to learn with Avai, but guess what? The father is sharper. Looking at the demons in Avai's house, a miracle has the possibility to sprout. Avai told the student not to give him a place to rest. He will solve all the rest by himself. Avai gave Rav Acha the baby trash. Acha hoped that the danger would go away and that it would all fall into place. Rav Acha looked up and saw a snake with seven heads looking at him in the eye. He was afraid he would take too long and be demonized. Acha prayed and prayed took a bow and saw that he was saved. If it wasn't for this, he would be in danger. After all the heads fell off, he realized the real power of prayer. When a man must choose from right or wrong, we all dance to the same old song. To marry or learn is the burden of life, don't be filled with strife. There is many concern if he really wants to learn. The weight on his shoulder is the weight of a boulder. Which will he choose? Everyone learns in Israel. So, Israelis stay home and take care of the wife. Babylonians leave their family with a poor life. Or should they not get married? That's what Tosfot and Rashi said. It was told to Rav Kesta by Rav Huna that Rav Hamnuna was a great person, but his reputation was worsened because he hadn't married a wife. It's as if all the days of his life were a sin after his 20th birthday. The truth is that he may have disrespected God's way because he thought he could stay without a wife and be well, but Rav says that his bones will swell. Educate your enfants in sa jeunesse pour qu'ils n'oublient pas la vérité de la Torah. Cela veut dire maintenir et soutenir de 16 à 22 l'éducation d'un juif. Il y en a qui disent de 18 à 24 sont les âges critiques dans lesquels il doit apprendre. Hello, I'm me time again and today I'm going to teach you Gemara lesson. Gemara questions here until how many years a man must teach his son Gemara, maybe until he's 101. And if the father can't teach, take him to shul where the rabbis preach. No breakfast meat for you until you be a good Jew. And take your son to shul to learn till his knowledge is full. According to Rav Safra, Divide your learning to Mikra, Mishnah, and Gemara. You don't know when you're going to die. Los Rios Uliomi, don't be shy. When someone asks you about Torah, answer them right away. Don't sway. Repetition is the way. For your sons, you must take wives. They give birth, create lives. Take your daughters, make them pretty. And you teach your children swimming to make sure that they keep living. So you teach them a trade and obligation you can't evade. This Gemara has displayed. But if you don't, it's like teaching stealing, which is rather unappealing. But what's the real difference between teaching a job and a trade? That the fact that you taught business plus a job is more monotonous, doesn't require consciousness, and it trade uses skills, and that does more to pay the bills. I'm sorry I'm mistaken, let me make my correction. You boys have strived, and now I can derive this year has been a success. Rabbi, for some filled with distress. You've tried your best. 
especially on this reading test. Don't be sorry, Ari, because we're only at Yeshiva break. So much left to be learned, knowledge to be found, knowledge to be earned. Class is dismissed, boys. The rabbis taught, Torah is compared to the medicine of life. I want to make this rhyme, let's eat some rice. They taught us a muscle of a man, his name was Dan. He hit us on a great hit and put a bandage right on it. They continue to say, eat what you want, drink what you want. You don't go to pay, warm or cold, take a bath. Don't hit your son, just add a rest. He said, please God, let me advise. Even take the bandage off, boil the rice. And talks about God, you better give sacrifices. He created the Yetzirah and the Torah as a spice. Lo and behold, if you're good, you will prevail in heaven chilling with the fruit cocktail. But if you're not, it's terrifying. At the entrance, sin is lying. But one more thing, yo, I don't care. A spoken word is supposed to be fair. You say I can't rap, only eat crep lock. But what do I know? I'm only Rabbi Mendelah. Oh!